things slowed down, loads of people sold off, and by the way, they sold off here at a loss because these are pink bars. If these bars were a different color, i.e., you know, these are blue bars like here, this is when people are selling at a profit. So you can see here price is going up and people are selling at a profit. I can actually see the profit sell off. When looking at price charts for DEX tokens, I found it impossible to tell why price actually moved the way it did and better yet, tried to anticipate what price movement would happen next. So I decided to change that and build a chart that would show me who made money, who lost money, by how much, and how fast. But first, why don't we just use what we already have? I mean, we have price charts that can give us daily, hourly, 15 minute, one minute time frames, moving averages, RSI, Fibonacci, pink elephants, and orange monkeys. But when we went through the machine learning applied to stock and crypto trading course, we could see objectively that really, there's no real edge in using all of that analysis. So I decided, why don't we just take what investment banks are already doing with stocks, bonds, forex, and other assets and apply it to degenerate crypto tokens on Binance and Ethereum. For example, let's just take an hourly chart like this. We could pick daily or anything. I'm just gonna choose hourly. So what you see on the chart is, every time time moves by one hour, a new bar is printed or every time time moves by another hour, another bar or candle is printed. And so this is a time bars chart. This is what you're used to using. But time is not what moves price. Volume is what moves price. With this idea in mind, I found that there were really three steps to building a chart that would tell me why price actually moved the way it did so that I could anticipate what other traders might be doing and gain that edge. The first step, was to replace time bars with dollar bars. Meaning that instead of, for example, for every hour, we print a new candle, we did it based on how much volume was traded. For example, if five Ethereum was traded, a bar is printed. If another five Ethereum is traded, another bar is printed. If another five Ethereum is traded, another bar is printed and so on. So instead of time printing candles and bars, volume is printing candles in bars. And don't worry, I made this adjustable so it doesn't have to be five Ethereum. We can zoom in and out of charts if we want to. With that solved, I tried to also add a feeling of momentum. I wanted to know how fast were buy and sell orders actually coming in. And so what I did here was just color code bars underneath each candle that would tell me with a light color if the orders came in fast and a darker color if it took longer for that bar to fill. And this gave me a true and real feeling of what momentum was doing. But I ran into a problem here. All of these exchanges and online tools are using TradingView as their charting package. And TradingView is excellent. I love TradingView for time-based bars, but it wasn't gonna cut it for what we need. So all of this had to be built line by line, code by code from the ground up. Step two was to track every single seller who owned the token before it listed on the exchange, i.e. these are people that might have bought on pre-sale or minted the token themselves, and they are now dumping onto the market after the token went live. I decided to call this group of traders external traders. Just a caveat though, I'm only tracking the last 10,000 trades because this is essentially tick data. We're dealing with a lot of data here, otherwise things get really slow. So if they bought before that 10,000 trades for now, they're gonna show up here too, but don't worry, I'm working on a fix for that. Okay, so this next part really excited me when I'd seen it for the first time. By tracking every single account that bought or sold after the token listing, we can see the aggregate volume of traders selling at a profit and traders selling at a loss. And so we can see when the sell pressure has likely died down and therefore there's more potential for upside. It's fantastic now to be able to see not only why did price move the way it did, i.e. who bought or sold, but we can also tell how much pain or comfort traders were in when that movement happened. Now, I don't know about you, but no RSI or moving average is going to really tell me that. Let's actually just go through what's actually going on here on screen, just to really cement home what we're looking at. So for example, here I'm looking at Agata, against WBNB, this is the token I've got up here. And by the way, you can add whichever token pair you want to. You just put in the token address and the pair contract, just like you'd find it here on Dex Tools. By the way, shout out to Dex Tools, it's a fantastic tool. So you can just go and put in a new token pair because I've only put in a select few right now, but you can add your own. That's the first thing. The second thing is 
Here I'm looking at all of these recent trades and I can see, for example, this trader here, this account, if I click on it, it'll bring up all the trades down here. So this account has had 261 trades by the time it got here with a 61.7% win rate. And I can actually see here on the chart where this person is buying and selling. And I can see down here the exact buying and selling that was going on. So I might choose to copy this trader or copy that address, put it into my own algorithm, do whatever you want with it. Uh, right now, and as you can imagine, I've got ideas for that. Now, something else to note. In fact, let me just go and change the token here to, I'll put in something like PNDR because I think I've actually got that up right now on Dex Tools. So let's have a look at Dex Tools. This is the price chart for PNDR. Okay, so this is a time-based price chart. This is what you can see here. Things kind of dwindled for a while. This is actually a daily time frame. But when we look at this based on contracts traded and the algorithm will actually work out for you the amount of, in this case, BUSD traded. So this is every 27K, it's forming a new bar. That's what this threshold is. So every 27,000 BUSD, it's forming a new bar. This is actually what happened. Now, if we look here where these bars are darker, this means this took a long time to happen. And actually, if I just hover my mouse over here, you'll notice that it says it took 119.7 hours. By the way, if you can't see that, it's up here. It's at this section here. When I hover over the price, so up here, it'll tell me, all right, this took about 200 hours for that bar to complete. So when we're actually looking at this over here, the momentum is extremely slow, right? So the momentum here is extremely, extremely slow. Whereas here, we can see the momentum's really fast because these are light colors. And so if I hover over those, you'll see those took literally less than 0.1 hours for these bars to complete. So here we have really fast moving price action. And here we have really slow moving price action, what some might call consolidating. So that's something interesting to note. The other thing is this over here will tell you for every 27K what sort of proportion where buys and sells. And then this here will tell you for the last order that pushed it over that limit, how much buy or sell volume came in. So here you can see we had a ton of buy volume that happened here. We can see it by that bar. We can also see that this was more than 50%. So if I hover over that bar, it's actually 72% of that bar was buy volumes. It's telling me exactly. Now, if I scroll down here, we can actually see that in that bar, for example, over here, we had a bunch of people sell at a loss. This is people that bought after the token were listed. So people selling at a loss here. And we can actually see during this very slow consolidating period, tons of people just got rid of the token. So things slowed down, loads of people sold off. And by the way, they sold off here at a loss because these are pink bars. If these bars were a different color, i.e., you know, these are blue bars like here, this is when people are selling at a profit. So you can see your price is going up and people are selling at a profit. I can actually see the profit sell off and then that's dying down. And so we can see the momentum speeding up, even the sell momentum, and then this sell off at a profit is dying down. The other thing I can see is what actually happened. So this big bar here, what happened here? I'm going to keep changing my colors just so you can get used to what's going on. So this, this bar over here was really due to people who owned the token before. So this is before listing, dumping it on the market. I can actually see that happening. And this is what I absolutely love about this new way of looking at things. It's very difficult for me to now look at a time bar and feel like I know what's going on. When I'm looking at this, I know the momentum, I know who was buying, I know who was selling. And that's the point that I'm trying to convey here in this video. Even though this is just a bootstrap prototype of something much more bigger and secret right now that I'm working on, I decided to make this available to anyone and chucked it over at dexbars.com. Now essentially here we're using tick data, which as you'll know from traditional markets is stupidly expensive. However, you can run this for free. I used BitQuery, so you can use BitQuery's free tier and just plug in your API keys when you go and connect your data on Dexbars. Or you can just sign in as a wizard with Crypto Wizards and you can use the data that I'm using right now. So if you're a wizard, that'll make sense for you because it's the least friction. And if you just want to do everything for free and you don't want to pay anything, just get a free tier with BitQuery 
and enter in your BitQuery credentials and you'll be ready to go. Right now, this is only working for smart contracts that use the Uniswap V2 protocol. So if you use Uniswap V2 or PancakeSwap or anything like that, then this will work fine for you. But if you're using PancakeSwap V3 or Uniswap V3 based protocols, right now this probably won't work for you. Now, I've learned a lot from building this and there's some really cool stuff in the works that of course I'm gonna keep you updated on. But honestly, different traders trade with different tools and they need different information. So I've also left a feedback button for you. This just goes to a Google form. You can punch in exactly what you hate about the idea, what you really dislike about the tool, and I encourage you to do that. And you can also point out things that you really like that you hope will remain or be improved in future versions. Cryptocurrency only continues to become more exciting to me by the day, and I'm sure the same for you. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.